What's up, Groovy Cat people? It is Jackson Galaxy back with you today to talk about your cats. In this case, not necessarily your cat, although our question asker of the day, Hayden, has a question that you guys are asking me all the time. And it always comes down to this. I want this. My cat is saying, well, I want this, and ne'er the twain shall meet. I'm here in the middle as the meeting point. You want this? I want this, Jackson. You want this? Meow. Okay. My whole brain is a cartoon, people, if you haven't figured that out yet. Let's talk to Hayden, or let Hayden talk to me. Hayden, take it away before I just become so mushed mouth that nobody cares. Okay, here we go. Hi Jackson, my name is Hayden. I use he him pronouns. My cat Sassy loves to get up on our coffee table. In fact, I think she's gonna do it right now. Hold on. Come on, down, down. I'm stopping right here because Hayden is like, <laughs> my cat Sassy always wants to get up on the coffee. Oh, yeah, she wants to do it right now. <laughs> I just, uh, I just <laughs> why does that crack me up so much? Uh, moving on. Hayden, please save me. Down. Boink. Down. Boink. We have several large high items that we try to entice her onto with treats, and she goes up on them, but then eventually hops back down. Um, and I'm not really sure what to do. We do eat by the coffee table. Say that again, Hayden? We do eat by the coffee table, and I suspect that's part of it, but we have been trying to get her up on those um, high places while we're eating so she is getting fed as well. I'm not really sure how to get her to stop being on the coffee table. Please help me. Plain and simple, right there. Hayden is saying, we eat here. We eat at the coffee table. Hence, there's food on the coffee table. We'll get back to that in a second. Sassy just really wants to be on the coffee table. We give her all of these vertical spaces. Good on you, Hayden. Uh, but she eventually gets down from there, which is to say that she does hang out in those spaces. Like I said before, it's the, I want this from my cat. The cat's like, but I want this. And then we just got to figure out the why so that we can compromise. Let me just go on a little bit of a tangent here for a second. This is why it's so important for us not to look at cats through dog colored glasses because dogs don't necessarily insist that we meet them in the middle. Cats are actually more like other humans. Other humans insist that we meet them in the middle, that everything is about compromise in human relationships, but it is very much like that in cat-human relationships as well, because we think when it comes to living with an animal under our roof, that that animal should abide by our rules. Not so fast, Hayden and the rest of my friends. Uh, I, compromise is key. So let's get into what that compromise could be. The first thing that uh, I stopped on twice now is we eat at the coffee table. That means that there's food uh, often available on the table. If not food, then water. Something that Sassy's gonna be like, well, this is just for me, right? You're saying this is for me. And, and Hayden is like, no, I'm saying go away. Boink. Boink. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. I'm gonna put her down. Boink. Boink. Hayden is someone after my own heart, clearly from the cartoon mind standpoint. Anyhow, here's a couple of ways that we can address the compromise. Number one is the eating. Hayden, if you're not already feeding Sassy through meal times, that's the way to start here. Because if you're free feeding Sassy, if there's food out for her 24 seven, then you're not getting in her into a circadian rhythm that matches yours. We want her body clock to be in the same place as your body clock, which which is to say, if you guys are gonna eat dinner at the coffee table, well then her dinner should be available at that same exact time. And there you go, she's eating, you're eating. That'll keep her away from the table during meal times. And that's the thing I can stress right there. Right now we're just trying to address, I don't want her getting into my dinner while we're eating or get into the condiments or get into the, the hot salsa uh, or, or, the, or drink out of my water glass while we're eating. So really lining her meal time up with yours, that's how we can start that answer. Now, what about the rest of the time? And the rest of the time that she's constantly trying to get up on the coffee table while you're saying, but, but here you've got a cat tree here. 
here. And you've got this wonderful little kitty sill right here so that you can hop up and look out the window and yet you're still choosing this space. Well, let's look at two different possibilities. The first one is you're sitting on the couch. And let's say you're sitting on the couch and you're watching TV. What's in the middle of the TV and the couch? The coffee table. So anybody who has sat at their computer and had their cat lay across the keyboard, or you've read a newspaper and your cat suddenly decides, I like to sleep on newspaper. It's not just about, well, I like the feel of newspaper. It is definitely a, uh, a cry for attention, so to speak. I just, I, I wanna play, I, I want you to pay attention to me, and you're paying attention to this, so I am just going to get in the middle of these two things and hold up a sign that says meow while you hold up a sign that says boink. Boink. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's just such a joke that will never get old for me. But anyway, you get ready to sit down and she's getting ready to stand up. So what you would want is that when you sit down, she goes and lays someplace, that she goes to sleep at the same time that you get off your feet, kick up and start watching TV. So that means that playtime should come before you guys sit down. So think about how this can all play together, right? You can be saying, all right, well, we're about to sit down and eat dinner. We're sitting down and we're eating. So before that, you play with her and a nice chunky play session. You know, you've got a bunch of empty space here, Aiden. You've got a lot of places to be able to run around with her, jump up and down and really exhaust her. What comes after just really pooping out your cat? Feeding time. What you're doing right now is you're solving both problems at one time, which is you're getting her tired so she's not gonna be attention seeking and you're feeding her so she's not going after food. So by the time you guys sit down to just kick back, you know, or to the best of your ability, Sassy is also going to be kicking back and kicking back in one of the places that she really likes to sleep because my guess is the coffee table is not a sleepy spot. The coffee table is a high energy, high attention and food motivated spot. So we are, we're taking care of all this at the same time. So that's uh, one aspect to this solution. The second aspect is what I call the confident wear. Every cat has a different place on the vertical axis where they really get their mojo, where they feel comfortable, they feel protected, and they feel confident. And that can be anywhere from knee height, like it could be an ottoman where your cat's like, that's right, I feel good, you know? to up here on the arm of a chair, to coffee table, to up on the top of a tree. And it could very well be that part of the issue is that Sassy's confident where is coffee table height. So what are we gonna do there? Well, think about the compromise there. Let's find her another place to sit that has proximity to you guys. It's in the socially significant nexus. Hoo hoo the socially significant nexus. While I sit here and make sort of the crystal ball kind of witch's brew thing here, the socially significant nexus. Where was I? Coffee table height. Coffee table height, thank you. We're at coffee table height. So, and, and in the socially significant nexus, where it counts, you know? Where y you guys are, where the couple is, the cat would wanna be, right? We should have a bed that that is raised up a little bit, but comfortable, a, a, the kind of texture that Sassy likes and the location that Sassy likes to sleep. So, let's think of beds that are raised a little bit. One solution that I have for you, uh, is dog booster seats that you put in a car are nice and comfy, but they're also raised a little bit. That's just one of the solutions I've found. You can also take a normal old cat bed and put it up on, on a crate or something like that. As long as your cat can jump on there and there's not a moment of wiggle, then you're good. You also want it to be off to the side just enough that she's not gonna jump from that spot to the coffee table itself. But what you're doing there is you're just making sure that you're 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 hitting that confident wear and that confident wear also has to do with clearly proximity to you and your partner and that's it.
you know? One last hint that I'll give you is to take a look at the things that she likes to sleep on or jump on or do whatever, but then she gets bored really quickly. Take a look at where that cat tree is. You have a nice amount of window space in the house. I would really tell you to take that beautiful cat tree and put it closer to the window because one thing that will occupy cats is cat TV. Cat TV is what happens outside the window of your place. What's going on on the street? Are there birds flying around? Just people walking cars, that kind of thing. It just keeps the cat mind going. And a, a nice chunky cat tree like the one you've got, if you put it more in the corner, right? there where the window and the wall meet, that's where you could put that chunky cat tree because not only can she watch cat TV, she can watch you guys as well. Aha, while you watch TV. See, it's a socially significant nexus. It's the zeitgeist. It's the axiom. It is the uber sphere. I'm just pulling words out. <laughs> I, this reminds me of like when I was like in high school trying to name my band and I'm like, <laughs> And I'm just looking for like words. That's how I wound up with a name like Paradox or Pegasus. You know, you're just looking for whatever words that work. And in this case, it's Nexus, Zeitgeist, Paradigm. Uh, hopefully, Hayden, I've been able to help you out a little bit with Sassy. If no other way, you've gotten to know her better, know where confident wares are, know how her energy patterns go up and down, know where she can be more involved and on what levels, because what happens from there? Compromise. I eat, you eat, I play, you play, I rest, you rest, patty cake, patty cake, bake man. All right, Hayden, thank you so much for your question. Hopefully I've been able to help. Much love to you and Sassy and whatever city you are writing from. It looks really beautiful. In the meantime, if you guys have a question, you know exactly what to do because Hayden just did it perfectly. All you got to do is write to this address with a video detailing your question and also showing your cat doing exactly what you don't want them to do. And maybe I'll be able to help you guys out. And like I've said before, you guys, don't forget to subscribe to this here channel and and hit the bell because every Catterday you will get alerts to know when the premiere is, when our live chat is happening alongside of the premiere. It's a lot of fun. And if you haven't been around for that one, join me the next time every Catterday morning. And uh, yeah, man, don't forget a little thumbs up action. Never hurts anybody. It's just like, boom, yeah, Jackson did an okay job. Right? Okay, until next time, you guys, all light, all love, all cat mojo to you. Meow.